Hello and welcome back to Sharks Happen. On today's show we're going to go over a couple swimmers attacked, we're going to go over a surfer attacked, we're going to go over a person bobbing in the waters, and we'll finish out the show with uh, you don't hear that every day. Hope you stick around, going to be a great show. Okay, we're going to head on over to Mona Vale, which is over in New South Wales, Australia. The date on this attack is April 25th of 1996. Aya Hamea, she is 16 years old, and she is out swimming with 11-year-old Luke Baker. They're in the water, they're, they're swimming, no telling if they're standing or if they're swimming at the time this happens. Uh, but Aya, she feels something grabbed her leg. She thought it was Luke and she said she kicked at it. She says that she repeatedly kicked at it until it let go because at first she thought it was Luke but then she realized it was a shark. She was worried it would eat her. So it sounds like she kicked it multiple times and seconds later Luke screamed. So she thought Luke got bit too and he might well have. Um, as soon as the shark let go of her, she grabbed onto Luke and they both went into shore. She ended up with tooth marks in her leg and it turned out to be from a Wobegong shark. Those bottom carpet sharks type things. And usually you step on, kick them for them to do that. And the two of them are out there in the water playing. Uh, they didn't say, you know, depth of shore, uh, a depth of water, distance from shore or even time of day. But you go ahead and you kick one when you're walking through there. They sit on the bottom of the, you know, the seafloor. So very easy to kick them, step on them. You don't even realize that and all of a sudden those things will turn and they will bite you. So uh, she ends up with a bite to the leg. It was minor. There are always minor injuries from those sharks. But Wobegongs, they get to be as big as far as lengthwise as the bull shark. They're four meters is their, their top. So you're talking 13, 13 and a half feet for them things. Uh, that's the same as the bull shark, and that would be a huge wobegong. I've never seen one um, that's bigger than the normal, you know, stingray size. But man, that would be a sight to see. To see a 14-foot wobegong, uh, I wouldn't want to see it. So that's our attack on Ayahamea. The attack on Luke, Bryan, uh, Luke Baker, I believe he might have been brushed against, you know, ended up with uh, some scuffing from the denticles on the shark's hide and I think that's might might be what happened and maybe the shark just brushed him or hit him with a tail and scared him and he screamed because I can't find anything in the news articles or even like when I Google when I look on sites Google DuckDuckGo I can't find anything on Luke so I'm not sure that Luke was bitten but she was definitely bitten in the leg it was minor attack not an attempt to predate well but we'll be going shark we just don't know how big but probably big enough for our stats Okay, now we're going to head over to Clearwater Beach, that is in Florida. The date is March 16th of 1975. William Hodges, 14 years old, he is out and he is on an inner tube and he's paddling himself along. He's not far from shore, 40 feet. So you're talking 10 meters, 11 meters, 12 meters from shore. He's very close to shore. And he's laying on the inner tube and he's paddling and he sees a shark. and the shark comes over after he sees it and grabs on and bites his leg. He screams and starts paddling to shore and it sounds like the shark just bit him once and let go because as soon as he started screaming the shark just swam off. He paddled in and got in They ended up doing the surgery that day. I believe it was a four hour surgery on his leg um, and it turned out William Hodges himself and the doctors both say um, they can't determine what kind of shark but that it was 10 feet. So it was a big shark that he ended up seeing when he's on his inner tube and it comes over and bites him in the leg. Um, you know, 10 foot shark, that is just huge. I think that's bigger than both the spinner and the, and the black tip gets. So, you know, you're talking, it's a different shark than that. So 10 foot shark, you're talking a different shark than the black tip or the, or the spinner which is the usual suspect over there when you're in the shallows and they come in looking for their food you know could be anything that gets that size from a you know bull shark sandbar shark uh, gray nurse your 
and lemon there's a bunch to choose from but 10 feet it cuts out those little guys so that's the attack on William Hodges an attack not an attempt to predate by a 10 foot shark we're just not sure what species okay now we're going to head over to Fripp Island and that is over in South Carolina the date is June 25th of 1996 Beth Shannon she is 24 years old and she was out in relatively deep water she says she was bobbing in the surf so you know the waves are probably I would say one two foot so you're probably standing in water to where when you're bobbing and it gets up to your chest or something probably in waist deep water I would think at the most and she's standing there and she's bobbing in the waves it's in the afternoon no depth of depth of the water or distance from shore but she says that she is hit just whacked in the leg and she said she didn't know where she was at first and and then she told everybody that they needed to get out of the water. She gets out of the water with them and she gets to see the damage to her leg. There was damage to her, to her calf, to the top part of the foot, and to her ankle from the bite. And I'm not sure this is a bite because of what she ended up saying. This shark came in fast, like it was chasing something, I think, and slammed into her leg because it doesn't sound like a bit down, thrash, did anything like that. I think it might have been chasing something else and ended up grabbing her and whatever it was swam by her for just that to, to happen. And uh, the, the force of the, the hit is, uh, is what makes me think that. Now... The doctors weren't sure if it was a shark bite or not. Um, she says that it wasn't a no, you know, crab that was swimming around. Whatever it was was big, and there have been people that have been bitten by, uh, attacked by, uh, barracuda, you know, in the past. But usually you're wearing something, and that's in, in your extremities going after jewelry. That that will attract an attack from a from a barracuda they they will look at that shiny flash in the in the sunlight and go after it so something like that could have happened too but it sounds to me like this shark she needed 24 stitches that's the other reason why i think this was a slam into her a accidental bite where shark was chasing something else because you would think there'd be more damage if the shark actually clamped down and did some shaking or even if it didn't do some shaking, I would think it would still need more than 24 stitches. So I think that the shark hit her open mouth chasing after fish. And that's her story on Beth Shannon, an attack, not an attempt to predate. And this one might not even be large, well, yeah, it might not even be large enough for our, our stats. But I'm going to put it in there anyway, and if I see something that says otherwise, I will take it out. Okay, now we're going to head quickly over near Port Arthur, which is over in Texas, and the date is July 10th of 1950. Mark Majors III, he is 11 years old, and he is out in the water when he's attacked by a shark. Uh, they don't give distance from shore, depth of the water, but he's bitten, and uh, they said that he had a decent gash on his leg from the shark. It took nine stitches to be able to close up the wound. People that were on the beach got him out of the water. Um, so this one, I, I would, you know, I would say this is smaller than we normally go over, but I thought I'd go over the attack because he was bitten and it is a Texas attack and we don't go over a lot of attacks over in Texas. Uh, I would just think this is a juvenile of some sort of a, you know, smaller shark, not your great white size thing, something smaller like sandbar or something like that. Uh, they say that it was, they think that it was, uh, hammerhead shark and if it was a hammerhead shark I would think that it was a smaller hammerhead shark or even a bonnet head shark so that would say to me this is smaller than we were going to put into our stats so with Mark Majors we're going to leave him out if I ever see that shark was larger than six feet I'll put him in okay now we're going to head over to Already Beach which is over in South Island New Zealand the date on this attack is January 29th of 2019 an unidentified 17-year-old female was in the water, and she was in the water with friends, and it sounds like they were all standing somewhat around each other because the friends had mentioned that they felt something bumping into their legs. And shortly after that, uh, this 17-year-old unidentified woman in a black wetsuit was bitten by the shark in the leg. She had a large bite to her thigh and other wounds to her leg. We just know this happened in the evening. We don't know the name. Uh, we don't know where it was. 
you know, no witness statements, even though other people were bumped by the shark. So that's the attack on the 17-year-old unidentified female in a black, black swimsuit. An attack, not an attempt to predate. We're going to have to assume it's over a six-foot shark. Um, it sounds like the damage to leg is a bigger shark. And that's all that we can do. Okay, now we're going to finish off our unprovoked attacks. We're going to head over to Coral Beach, and that is over in Bermuda. And the date on this attack is May 24th of 1960. Louis Gorin, he is 24 years old. He is out. Um, there's quite a few people on the beach and in the water. He is out in the water doing some snorkeling by a reef. Now, he's swimming over there. He cuts his right foot on the reef. So now he's bleeding from his right foot because he cut it on the reef. He is swimming back to shore. He's very close to shore. It's about three o'clock in the afternoon and he gets into waist deep water. Um, sounds like he's still swimming in waist deep water and he's bitten in his left foot. He's in waist deep water only 20 yards from shore and bitten in his left foot. His right foot was the one that was cut though. But you know the blood's coming out of a foot. The feet are cl pretty close to each other. Shark could have thought that that was the bleeding foot, who knows. Uh, but he ends up bitten in his left foot and now he gets his foot out and the shark retreats. So he had seen the shark but he didn't see it bite his foot. He saw the shark off at a distance and the shark went off to a distance and started slowly kind of making little quarter circles and coming back at him. He's screaming to people um, for help on the beach and he's keeping his back, making his way backwards to get back to the beach, keeping an eye on the shark, which is making repeated runs at him. Three of them, I think, three or four. And he ends up not, not only with the bite to the foot, the right foot, uh, the left foot, he's got a bite to the left foot, a cut on his right foot from the reef. Now he's got a bite on his forearm, and both of his hands get pretty messed up, fighting the shark off on his way back to the beach that makes at least three runs at him. And by what he says, it went off at a distance and kind of, curled around and then came back. So probably trying to do that sneak up on you thing and he was probably, his head is out of the water. You aren't gonna keep your eye on a shark's eyes and it ain't gonna see that you're looking at it if your head is up out of the water. So looking at a shark when your head's out of the water, I don't think that's effective like it is when you're in the water. So that's the attack on Louis Gorin, an attack. He ends up surviving the attack. Um, an attack, not an attempt to predate. Now the thing is, is the shark stayed in the area. This is a nine foot shark and it turns out to be a nine foot female uh, dusky shark. This is like our fourth or fifth dusky shark we've gone over. Um, they attack more than I thought, but this she was not well. A uh, gentleman took the boat out, um, a guy that worked at the resort. I believe both of these people, Louis Gorin and the guy that goes out and actually kills the shark with a gaff. Both of them work at a resort there. And he took his boat out and like I said, the shark wouldn't leave the area and he finally gaffed it and the shark died. They brought it onto the beach and cut it open. It was completely empty. So again, we have another shark, just like I think with the great whites, that is desperate and looking for that easy meal. And a shark that usually isn't gonna try to eat, eat somebody that one was probably going to try. I'm not going to put it down as an attempt to predate, but I'll guarantee you that with that shark having that empty stomach and seeing a person that can't get out of the water, it was going to see if it couldn't get that meal before it left. So an attack, not an attempt to predate, a sadly uh, malnourished nine foot female dusky shark involved him and we'll get on to the end of the show. We'll get on to the end of the show and today we're going over to, uh, what is this? Horseshoe Bay over in Australia and this is in April 12th of 1960 and his name is Ivan Chandler and he was 17 years old. He is out doing some surfing about to take a shoot in he says so that's what they say when you're going to jump on a wave and take it into shore and he's about to take this wave when his, his arm is extended from his body and suddenly a shark leaps out of the water and tries to snap at his hand. Now the shark missed his hand, he must have pulled it away. He didn't know the shark was going for his hand, so the shark is going after something that's moving and it moves out of the way and the shark body crashes into him. So Ivan's sitting there and he's got a 12 foot great white shark slam into his body, bruising his arm and his side hitting him like that. But let me tell you, that's a lot better than that shark getting a hold of that hand. So, uh, 
that'd be a brute to hit you in the side. That's <laughs> we think about the bite a lot, but I don't think I think about the impact as much as I probably should. And that's just a crazy one. And it reminds me of the kid that was out there surfing that we covered in a m multiple sharks attack where the two great whites were in the wave, the curl of the wave, one of them got him in the arm, pulling him away from the second one. It was about to bite him in the head once he was in the water. So uh, another crazy one, and this one turns out best case scenario, just like that other one where that shark pulled him out of the way of the other guy. So that's the show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll be back in a few more days for another show. But until then, if you go in that water, you are much more afraid of those sharks than they are of you.